Men of the West, over the years and with increasing fervor, you have voiced your frustration with certain insidious institutions that our government both publicly sanctions or privately and clandestinely condones, namely the abortion industry and the sexual trafficking and debased exploitation of children. I need not tell you the hatred with which God Almighty looks upon these institutions, their founders, and their participants, and I need not remind you of the deep sorrow of Jesus Christ, our brother, as he took upon himself the burden of these sins in the Garden of Gethsemane, carrying them to Golgotha where he nailed them to the cross. Indeed, our own sins, hateful and damnable, there were nailed, and we died with Christ. Yet by our faith in Jesus Christ as Lord of all, and by the power of his Holy Spirit, we have now been made alive with Christ, and with renewed life and renewed sight, we walk daily in the darkness of the world from which we have been plucked as incomprehensible lights, light which cannot be overcome because it is the light of Christ who has all power and authority forever. Amen. It is this light which we wish to cast towards the darkness of abortion and sex trafficking, so as to expose them. Yet I do not want you to be ignorant. What we are proposing is no simple task. It is war. The God of this age delights in the destruction of men. It has been his inclination since Eden. Much of the enemy's focus throughout history has been for men to give over their children to death by demons. And so now this delusion has fallen upon the people of our own soil. It is no mere foothold. It is a stronghold, but take heart, for the weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh, but have divine power to destroy strongholds. Our God has the power. Jesus Christ has overcome. The enemy will fall. However, though we know the power of God to prevail, we must prepare ourselves for battle. We will be in the thick of it. The enemy wishes to disarm us, break our will, and dissuade us from action. I ask you, to count the cost today. What is your commitment? To what end are you dedicated? Is our zeal only so shallow that we would commit our weapons to profound public bluster but inconsistent, listless pleas before the throne? Or is our faith so great as to go before God in bold fire, adjuring him to bring to open shame the authorities, powers, and so-called gods that have set themselves up in opposition to his holy name? Are we willing, like Christ our brother and the firstborn of the dead, to go to death? Indeed, if our living sacrifice result in death, may our blood which is spilt be like unto the peace offering thrown against the altar of God and thereby secure the favor of the Almighty to this end. Victory in the name of Christ. This world was bought by the blood of Christ, just as we are, and no blood spilled by martyrs has failed to secure the salvation of the people who shed it when the gospel comes full glory to their borders once more. With this in mind, let us make preparation, knowing the patterns of warfare with which we'll be confronted. Examine yourself, man. Go to God in penitent prayer and ask Him daily to seek out those wanting ways within you so that you can confess them to God and confess them one to another. Secret sin has always impeded the Christian from being effectual and is often exploited by the enemy for your destruction. Expose it and let Christ destroy it so that you may be useful. Examine your family. How is your relationship with your wife? The enemy will use any bitterness or unforgiveness to drive a wedge between you and her and render your zeal cold. Remember, as noble as a cause may be, your family is your first ministry. If a man is saved, but your marriage falls apart and your children go to hell due to your neglect, what is that to you? Instead, love your wives, pray with them, listen to them, die for them. Do not begin down this road unless you are united in this purpose with her. You will both need to be in prayer for one another and for your children. Heed Jacob's words. Let my Lord pass on ahead of his servant, and I will lead on slowly at the pace of the livestock that are ahead of me and at the pace of the children. So examine your household and see that it is in order. If after these considerations you are at peace, then let us, like Israel, after suffering defeat, consecrate ourselves by a fast, so that the Lord may reveal to us our iniquity and may bless the warfare of our prayers and of our hands 
For indeed, we have suffered defeat, and indeed, we have been sinful. So let us confess to God and be renewed, so that we will be bold in our warfare and constant in trial, standing in the armor of God, so that when you go out to war against your enemies and see horses and chariots and an army larger than your own, you shall not be afraid of them. For the Lord your God is with you, who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. Psalm 144 begins, Blessed be the Lord, my rock, who trains my hands for war and my fingers for battle. He is my steadfast love and my fortress, my stronghold and my deliverer, my shield and he in whom I take refuge, who subdues peoples under me. Bless the Lord, and may he train us to be men who war in righteousness and hold fast to him as he subdues our enemies. And may we see the utter end of sex trafficking and the absolute abolition of abortion in our day. In Christ, Seth Dean, January 13th, 2021 AD.